All right, welcome back everybody. This session is um, kind of an introduction to Andy Mark for those of you who uh, use Andy Mark. We have Danny Blau, who is who ha is a F FRC alum, if I recall. Is that correct? Yep. Awesome. And uh, so, Danny, go ahead and take it away. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen here, and we can kind of go that route. Um, and we're going to try to keep this, you know, really, really sort of fast paced, really going. So if you have any questions, um, if you want to um, type those in the chat and, um, you know, we're going to try to, to get to those, um, you know, throughout the, the presentation um, and try to hit anything as, as you know, topical as, as we can get it. Um, so for anybody who saw the, the rookie coach presentation that I did, um, PowerPoint's going to be fairly similar, so we, um, but we'll kind of rifle through that. Um, we'll kind of look at some of the tips and tricks uh, for kind of Andy Mark, our, our product line, and also our, our website sort of as a whole. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So um, like Becca said, I am uh, an alumni of the FIRST program. I was actually in uh, both FRC and FLL officially. Um, and then I was um, sort of right around the time that uh, FIRST sort of created the, the small robot program. At that point, it was the first VEX challenge. Um, and so I got to play uh, some of those really early games as well. Um, but I started in first in 2002, started at AndyMark in 2013. I work product development for AndyMark, so I get to do um, a lot of our sort of new creation, new stuff um, on that front. Um, and then I sort of get to hold, um, you know, the, the, the position of I'm the product line architect for all of our FTC stuff. So um, I'm really excited to be able to talk to the, the movers and shakers of, of FTC uh, on the, the call here today. Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's really, really exciting. Um, you can see my email address there, uh, nice and simple. It's just danny at andymark.com. So if you have any questions or anything that you want to follow up with from today, um, feel free to uh, reach out and let me know. Um, and then the, the phone number there on the screen is just the, the Andy Mark general phone number. We're open nine to five, Monday to Friday, uh, Eastern time. Um, so what is Andy Mark? Well, that's kind of not the right question. The, the better question is who is Andy Mark? Um, so Andy Mark was uh, founded by two gentlemen, um, Andy Baker and Mark Coors. Um, and that's where the name of the company comes from. Uh, it was founded in 2004. Um, and it was really there to meet the need of a lot of products that were not available uh, for first teams. Um, so it really meant it was sort of created to fill the void um, and help first teams get products that were really specific to the sort of robots and to the sort of challenges, you know, that they were coming, uh, that they were facing. A lot of stuff at that point in the hobby world was really too small and the stuff in the industrial world was really too big. And so the original company was sort of that, that space in the middle. Um, and now we've, we've continued sort of that laser focus on the things that make uh, a, a first team's life easier are sort of the big, you know, areas that we focus on. Um, so Andy is our company president. Um, Mark retired back in 2016. Um, both started mentoring um, in the uh, late 90s. Um, and so on to the, the Andy Mark staff. It is, Andy Mark staff is largely made up of mentors, alumni, volunteers, parents, um, but generally just sort of members of the first community. Um, you know, we have people who, you know, work on like the event planning side and then sort of the, the leadership team for, you know, first in our state. Um, so we really sort of have first sort of through and through throughout, you know, the entire company's, you know, sort of makeup. Um, we range from about 25 to 40 plus people, uh, depending on the time of year. So as you can sort of imagine, uh, during kickoff season, um, you know, it's really busy. We got to pack a lot of orders, get those out the door, you know, really quick. So we, you know, bring on more temp staff and more seasonal staff to help out with that. Um, and we're about 25 or so people sort of full time year round. Um, we have sort of more than 200 years of combined first experience and several half lifers uh, on staff. So myself included, but several people on staff that have been doing first for more than half their life. Um, and really, Andy Mark is a company set up to, you know, meet the needs of the first community, really sort of from the first community. So th this is by far the, the biggest thing that we do. Um, this is not a first is not a side project for us. Like first is our main focus. This is the thing that we do. Um, and, and we are just so excited to be able to sort of work at the thing that is all of our sort of collective passions, you know, on a daily basis. All right. So now what is Andy Mark? 
Andy Mark strives to develop innovative products and outstanding service while inspiring our customers and making a positive impact in our community. That's our mission statement. It hangs up on the warehouse, um, and and you know it's something that we talk about, you know, at the top of you know a lot of our meetings, just to help everybody sort of refocus and really sort of make sure we know um, what we're going after. Um, and so the, the major way that we sort of accomplish those goals um, for the first community is we make stuff. Um, we make parts and components, you know, assemblies and kits for first teams. Um, sometimes, you know, we design those ourselves. So a lot of the stuff that is super first specific, um, you know, those are things that we've designed ourselves um, internally and we have, you know, various manufacturing to, to get that made. Um, and sometimes we buy parts in from existing suppliers. So a lot of, you know, generic, slightly generic or more standard things, um, you know, servos, bearings, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, those we're buying in from suppliers. But with everything that we do, we're really trying to make sure that we are doing it specifically and focused for the first community. We don't want to just bring in any servo. We want to make sure that we're bringing in servos that are legal or we want to make sure that we're bringing in servos that are functional. When we design a wheel, we design a wheel not to hold 10,000 pounds, um, but more like 50 or 150, depending on what kind of robots that we're, we're looking at. Um, but really, it's, it's always trying to keep at its heart, you know, that these are her first robots. We are located in Kokomo, Indiana, which is just a, a short seven hour and 15 minute drive from uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we do a lot of manufacturing uh, in-house. Um, that is something that we've actually expanded uh, over the years, bringing more and more manufacturing in-house. Um, but we do uh, a really, we do a significant amount of manufacturing in Kokomo with various machine shops and various um, vendors, you know, that we have very, very close relationship to, uh, relationships with. Um, and one of the things that that helps us do is we, because we have such strong relationships, we can go sort of on a daily basis, you know, and say, hey, we, we know we have this big, long queue, you know, this big, long, you know, pile of, of POs that, you know, with, with, you know, a machine shop. Um, but, but actually we need to reshuffle the order of, of those POs. So we actually, we need you to do that one first and then this one because our customers are demanding stuff and, and we actually, we need mechanic wheels more than we need shafts. And so, you know, we can have those relationships and, and we can really prioritize, you know, things really, really quickly so that we're trying to make sure that we're always getting stuff back in stock, um, as fast as we can or keeping up with demand so that things don't go out of stock. That's, that's the general we always have that goal. Um, so by, by having everything be very local to us, it gives us a lot of adva advantages to be very flexible and be very nimble. Um, we also do um, a bit of manufacturing um, throughout the greater Midwest. Um, and all of our fulfillment happens out of our, our one facility in Kokomo. So our, we, we refer to it very jokingly refer to it as our world headquarters, you know, but all customer service, all design and engineering, all website maintenance, IT, media, um, all of that stuff happens out of our one facility in Kokomo. Um, and it's, it's backed up to our, you know, it's connected to our, um, you know, warehouse where we do all of our order fulfillment from and all of our uh, manufacturing, you know, and, and everything is under one roof. Um, and then we contract things out um, from there. So our history with FTC, um, we started back in 2012 um, where we started distributing the game piece. Um, so that was uh, these, the, the rings that are, that are up here on the screen. Um, so we started that, um, you know, way back when, uh, and then the next year we, um, you know, sort of working with first and working with the game design committee, we developed one of the first custom game pieces for, I believe this actually is maybe one of the first custom game pieces for any first game that has happened. Um, but the, the two inch cube, uh, is something that was uh, designed in collaboration between Andy Mark, the GDC, and FIRST. Um, and then the, the manufacturing for that happens uh, in Kokomo. And so we did all of the manufacturing and fulfillment for um, that game piece. Um, and then from there in 2014, we actually, we, we, you know, again, having more conversations with FIRST, you know, we decided, you know, it, it made sense to scale up and start doing the entire competition field. Um, that really helped with you know consistency across events and it also removed a barrier you know to entry for a lot of teams because now they can have a really great practice experience without needing to be you know a, a general contractor you know carpenter you know or or you know be you know sort of you know very skilled at, at sourcing and manufacturing all of these different components um so you know and we've really enjoyed you know getting to work with the game design committee and you know first on all these various projects um, and some of the other things that we, you know, made from some of our other early parts, um, you know, 
sourcing soft tiles so that teams have, you know, the right bulk quantities of those, um, you know, the field perimeter and also the Samantha module, which was a, a custom communications module for back when NXTs were on robots. Um, so we did uh, some of the fulfillment for that as well. So um, we, we've really enjoyed our time in FTC um, and we're, we're excited to, to keep moving forward with that. Um, so on the robot part side, um, you know, that took a, a little bit of a different journey, but um, one of the first products that we ever launched specifically for FTC uh, on, on the robot side was the Neverest motor. Um, and so that had um, a really sort of fun development cycle and that had a lot of, you know, really, really valuable lessons learned and things that we have sort of carried forward throughout all of our, you know, future or, or future since that um, product, you know, for FTC and it, and it really sort of taught us, you know, it re taught us the value of listening to our customers and really going out and finding the things that they need the most. Um, so for any of you who have, you know, been in FTC for, for quite a long while, the standard motor prior to the Neverest was, um, you know, made by a different vendor and they just weren't sort of fit for purpose for an FTC robot. So when we went around and asked, you know, a bunch of teams, hey, what's, what's the frustrating part about building a robot? What's the, what's the challenging, you know, tiresome, you know, part about building a robot? And they all said, hey, I've got this big bucket of burnt out, blown up, destroyed, smashed up, you know, motors that don't work anymore. Um, and, and like, they, they just, they blow up way too fast, way too easily. So please, please, please fix this. So we, we sort of took that directive, you know, from the teams, you know, we, we went to first and said, Hey, we want to put a new motor in, you know, make it legal for FTC. And we want, and this is why we want to do it. People are frustrated with this. We want to try to put something into first that is, you know, really high quality um, and, and sort of removes all those frustrations. And so we, we then took sort of the performance specs, you know, that everybody was looking for and the longevity that people were looking for. And we took that over to our, you know, various motor vendors. Um, and we said, Hey, this is, this is what we need you to go do. We need you to build a motor that won't break, won't, you know, blow up, won't smoke. Um, and it's going to last, you know, for a season, not just a match. You know, we, we really want this for the long haul. And so, you know, we were able to get in uh, the, the Neverest motor and, you know, do a lot of testing on that, you know, and then start getting that out into the world starting in 2015. And very quickly, the feedback from the community is that, you know, this was checking all of those boxes. And so, you know, from that, you know, sort of community feedback, you know, it, it, the, the community sort of took this as sort of the new gold standard of, of motor. Um, and one of the, the key metrics that we were looking at is if, uh, it's called a locked rotor stall test. So basically, if you, if you hold the output shaft absolutely firm and you don't let anything spin in the motor, you apply full 12 volts, you know, and as many uh, amps as the motor will take, um, how long before it heats up to the point that something fails? Well, on the old motor, it was about four seconds, four to seven seconds, um, which is easy to make a mistake on your robot for four, four seconds. Um, and so teams blew these up often. Um, our motors, um, we have yet to test one below three minutes, um, which is well longer than an, an FTC match. Um, and we've had some that have been at a you know full locked rotor stall, 12 volts for north of 10 minutes. Um, and so that's really where the name Never Rest came from because these things just don't stop. They don't give up. Um, and that's one of the biggest reasons that you know the community has really sort of um, fallen in love with this motor. And so that the whole idea of listening to the community and, you know, trying to help solve the problems, you know, that they face is really one of the things that we take um, really to heart with all of the development that we do, you know, and everything that we've done since the Neverest motor. So from sort of that, we, we started to branch out and we started to create the, the FTC ecosystem of parts. Um, and one of the things that we really tried to do here is keep in mind that people have lots of different building systems from lots of different vendors. And some of them have their own pros and cons. Some of them, the pro is that they're very cheap and they don't suck. So, um, you know, it's a good entry level, you know, spot to be. Um, you know, some of them are, um, you know, really high performance, you know, lots of options, you know, you know, really wide variety of, of parts, but maybe they're a little bit more expensive. Um, and there's all sorts of different things in between. Um, and so, we really wanted to keep all of our stuff um, as, as crossover capable as possible. So a lot of the dimensions, especially on like the, the nub, um, you know, those work with components from Tetrix and now Go Builda and 
um, VEX parts, and they, they really work across lots of different platforms. Um, and so that was something that, that has always been really, really important to us. So our, our general mentality is that we never want to ask a team, you know, to say, get rid of all of the parts that they have and start over clean with exclusively Andy Mark parts. We're not here to monopolize your parts inventory. Um, so all of our stuff really tries to, as best we can, play well with a lot of the stuff in the sort of, F, the, the really, the broad FTC ecosystem. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of started with, you know, the Neverest motor, we had some wheels um, that sort of came out, you know, after that. Um, and then, you know, we, our, our HD Mechanum wheels were, were actually something that we sort of first developed for FRC, um, but we had a lot of customers that were using them in FTC and they were saying, hey, like, we really like this wheel, but, you know, in order to get it to work nice with the rest of our parts, it becomes really big, it becomes really bulky. And it, it, we need like three interface plates, you know, in order to get it to work right. And that's just kind of, that, that's just frustrating. We don't like that. Um, and so we took that feedback and we created a new core mold um, and so now we have an HD mechanical wheel specific for, um, you know, ease of assembly into an FTC robot. Um, and, and that is another one of the things that, you know, you know, has, has, we've gotten a lot of really strong feedback from that. And a lot of people really, really liking that wheel and, and using it, you know, for, for multiple seasons. Um, so we're really proud of, of that wheel and what it's been able to do sort of for drive trains and drive bases in FTC. Um, we sort of put a lot of that stuff together and we took a lot of our knowledge from building chassis and drivetrains and we sort of roped all of that together into the tile runner platform um, and all of the different configurations and variations and ways that you can mount sort of the, the motors or the gearboxes or the different gear ratios. Um, you know, one of the other things that we like to talk about is, um, you know, building things, we refer to building things on grid. So, the, the building systems within FTC common to us and, and to a lot of the other vendors sort of have a, a, an, a natural grid system in the way that they build. So we try to keep that in mind and allow for the ability to sort of build on that grid system to be really, really easy, really, really flexible. So we specifically designed the whole pattern, oopsies. We specifically set out the whole pattern along you know the top rails here so that it is an e even number of, of sort of interval spaces, grid spaces, for all the way from one side, all the way across to the other. So that, that way you could lay a beam across the top here and tie it in, in all four spots. Or, um, you know, if you start building superstructure going up, now, you know, if you go up, over, and back down again, those things are going to line up. One of the things that we really try for is to try for things to, to have that level of simplicity um, similar to like how you build with Legos, right? If, if Legos, right, they have a stud every, you know, exact interval. And so things that are close to, to going together go together because the interval spacing is always super perfect. So Lego is the absolute masters of that. Um, and we're trying to take some of those lessons learned and, and sort of apply them here as, as best we can. Um, and so really trying to get that sort of simplistic, you know, build environment um, onto, you know, sort of starting with the tile runner and then branching off into um, what we call our, our S3 system or simple superstructure system. Um, and so, you know, again, we have holes that are on the same 16 millimeter interval spacing um, and we have our slots that are 16 millimeters um, start stop. Um, so every 16 millimeters, you know, the slot either starts or stops. Um, so one of the nice things there is if you want to still build on the grid system, on this face, you can absolutely do that. Um, but for those applications where you do want a little bit more freedom, a little bit more flexibility, you wanna say, get something to exactly touch the ground, or you want something to, um, to you know, just have the exact right sort of spacing, or, or you know, better yet, you know, you have a beam that comes up and you wanna put a triangular brace, you know, that, that comes down. Some, you know, there are obviously triangles that work on perfect, you know, grid spacing, but, um, sometimes the demands of our robots, you know, don't really allow for those. So one of the things that we can do with the, the slotted face, you know, on the side is we can allow for those, um, you know, unique lengths that you need, those very specific, you know, sort of off grid lengths that you need. Um, and we can hold those very, you know, in a very controlled way, um, you know, and we still have a ton of freedom and flexibility. So with our brackets, you know, they have four holes uh, along the main side. So for our main structural brackets, um, you know, you'll kind of see here, we, we have several holes all around. 
Um, and so one of the big things that that allows you to do is you can drop two bolts into two corresponding slots and now you can move it anywhere along that 16 millimeters of travel and say you realize you max out the travel all to one end you can take those two bolts out drop them in the other two holes in the bracket and now you reset to a different you know set of uh the, the slots and now you can continue to move that bracket um you know wherever you'd like to to locate it um and so really like uh, uh, an aluminum extrusion based you know system where you just have a, a constant profile extruded out you know the s3 system still does give you the ability to put a component anywhere along the beam that you would like um but one of the big things that it saves is it saves you um so some of those it makes those failure modes a little bit softer so if, if your bolts start to to loosen up for whatever reason you're only ever going to slide 16 millimeters as opposed to sliding all the way till you hit something, another cross beam or something, or, or you know, slide out the bottom of the rail. So uh, we really kind of like how some of those different, you know, features, you know, kind of play together and, and can interact with one another. Um, and one of the last things here about the, the S3 system is, you know, we have a, an eight millimeter hole every other interval pattern on the dotted face, as we call it. Um, and the big reason for that is the, the sort of the outside of the nub is an eight millimeter boss. Um, and so what you can do is you can put a nub onto you know, one of these beams and now you can turn a sort of static structural component into a motion component. So a great way to make arms and we have an elevator kit so you can make an, in arms and elevators and pivots and joints and all sorts, you know, grippers and all sorts of different stuff um, you know, with the same system. So we don't need separate motion components from our structural components. It's all done with the same pile of parts. Um, now we also get, you know, some, some really small size because we know FTC is a packaging problem. Um, and so we're able to fit a lot of stuff in the same volume because each individual element is a little bit smaller. Um, so the, the nub is sort of our way to hold wheels and, and various components, um, onto a shaft. And so one of the things that um, we did that we were actually the, the first one sort of in the FTC ecosystem to go do this is to create a D profile uh, nub or hub or, or you know, similar style component. Um, and so we actually, instead of having a round bore and a set screw that locks in place, we have a D profile uh, bore through the nub that's, you know, matches up with the D profile shaft on the motors or, or some of our, um, you know, just, extra shafts, you know, like we have here on the middle of the tower runner. Um, and so that now becomes your main sort of torque load uh, feature. And the set screw is there to sort of help reinforce that joint, um, but also help keep things along the length of the axle. Um, but they're not really doing that major torque load, um, sort of torque transfer, uh, you know, sort of workload. Um, so that was something that, you know, we're, we're really proud of. I and mean, we, we try to continue to innovate on you know the variety of, of the different you know products and try to make the the product line the ecosystem as as big and broad you know as it can be um and we're we're really excited to to always be getting that feedback getting that you know new information in um so that we can try to make those products and make that knowledge base you know better and better and better um as we go so um i'm gonna the next thing is a little bit of a transition does anybody have any comments or any questions uh, that they would like um, to to throw out here, and, and if you want to type them in the chat, um, you know, feel free to to go ahead and do that. Uh, there were a few comments, and I just want to mm -hmm. read them just so that they are recorded. Um, I want to give a big thank you to Andy Mark for the robot relief program. It is making a big difference for both of our teams this year. So, thank you, Andy Mark um, and Danny. Um, I love using the never rest motors with rev gearbox for the five millimeter hex shaft. Those motors are rock solid. And there's, there's a lot of advantages to, to using that, that five millimeter hex. Um, so there, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff, you know, that can happen on that front too. Um, and so we actually, um, because of that, we have, um, you know, some of our compliant wheels and some of our stealth wheels, um, we actually do have a five millimeter, five millimeter hex bore option uh, for some of those things. So, um, you know, we, we do have, um, a lot of options on on that front as well. So, um, thank you for those uh, uh, comments and and, and um, information there. Um, the the robot relief program. I'll, I'll touch on that real quick. Um, that was something that we were um, really excited about. We knew um, for this year specifically, fundraising for a lot of teams was going to be you know hard, and and so 
um, you know, we knew that there was, you know, opportunity out there for people who, you know, maybe have, you know, that they, they want to give back, you know, they, they were an alum or, or they know about the program, they, they want to, you know, help um, where they can, but, you know, they don't know exactly, you know, what teams to go, you know, give money to or, or maybe necessarily how to, to go do all that sort of stuff. So by opening up, you know, a, a means for them to sort of donate and then we can sort of, re, you know, grant that money out uh, into the, the community. Um, you know, it, it's been, you know, really awesome to be able to, to sort of be able to help facilitate, you know, some of those things, help get teams money so that, you know, they can have a little bit of a, an easier time, you know, for, you know, this year more than ever. Um, and it's, it's been really awesome. So we, we really enjoyed um, doing that. Um, and we're, I'm, I'm excited to, to hear that you guys are, are having a, a fun time with that and that it's helped out. Um, so thank you guys very much. All right. So we'll, we'll keep going. And if, if you guys have questions, um, feel free to, you know, keep, you know, put those in the, the chat. Um, we'll try to get to those. Um, I'm going to kind of pivot here just a little bit um, and go to sort of how to use the website. So there's a few sort of tips and tricks um, as people are sort of building, um, planning the robots, building the robots out, um, you know, some different features, you know, on the website here. So um, this is the, the homepage for andymark.com, uh, your source for all your robot part needs. Um, you know, we have, we're, we're really excited. We're doing the pre-sales for uh, the game this year, Ultimate Goal. Um, and we're, we're, can't wait for kickoff to happen and, and everybody to get to see, you know, the, the awesome new game challenge. Um, and so we can kind of see if we click on that there, you know, we take to, you know, a product page and we have various options, you know, that we can get, um, you know, full game set, partial game set, tape and tool set, um, all sorts of, you know, so those are sort of the main game options there. Um, we have the little information that we can provide currently. Um, this product page will get a lot more information after um, kickoff. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but say we've got something like the tile runner. Um, so we can go, we've got a lot of different variations. So we have, right, classic, mechanum, tread runner, omni wheel, pulp drive with our super crazy high performance wheels, um, you know, GTO, all sorts of different variations on those. Um, but say we've got, you know, we'll, we'll go click on one of these product pages here. You know, we can select all of our different, you know, options there, a um, bunch of different product overview, bunch of different information, gear ratio information, um, here's a blurb that sort of talks about all the different variations um, and sort of what each different kit comes with. Um, the, the various parts list for all the different things. Um, and then down here at the bottom, this is one of the things that um, some people know about and some people you know, use very frequently, um, but not everybody may know that we have um, on the vast majority of our product pages, we have the technical drawings and the CAD files for those relevant products directly there on, uh, you know, linked there on the product pages. Um, where we have guides or any supplemental documents, you know, we also try to uh, link those as well. Um, so you can see we have our assembly guides here. Um, but one of the things um, when we when we switched over websites about a year and a half ago, um, we, we switched the backend infrastructure of the website. Um, not all of the, the files landed the way that they're supposed to. Um, so on every single product page, you know, we have this link down at the bottom here to go to our, um, uh, file repository. Um, and so we sort of have, you know, we can look at our PDF drawings. Um, and now we have sort of one big list of all of the technical drawings that we have, um, sort of on our server, um, that are publicly releasable. Uh, the game files are not here. Uh, don't have to look for those. Um, but you know, everything's sorted by, by part number and then the name of the part. Um, so all sorts of, you know, all sorts of stuff here. Uh, the search bar does not search this stuff. So you have to go to the extra little search window, um, or do like a control F, um, and you can go find the, the part number that you might be looking for. Um, so this is, this is a, a really great resource. Um, and then we have, um, the same thing for our, um, you know, all of our CAD files. Um, so those are, are here as well. Um, again, all sorted by part number. Um, and so if there's anything that you can't find on the product page, um, there's a good chance that they might be here in the files repository. Um, 
so the the headers here at the top of the website um, they're they're really nice and good for um, kind of helping you to kind of navigate um, around through various categories um, the you can go to first first tech challenge and we kind of see a number of our different sort of product families that are all sort of specifically tailored towards FTC um, you know different parts and components all sorts of cool stuff we have last year's game elements here um, but one of the other things that's really good is if you if you sort of kind of more or less know a little bit of what you're looking for the search function is really good um, so if you know you're looking for a never rest motor um, never rest it'll even kind of help you if you get stuff spelled wrong um, and so you know we can kind of here show all of the cool various uh, never rest components um, that we've got going on uh, okay so a quick question that came in uh, do you have your step slash stl files in one big zip to make downloads easier uh, no we don't um, and partly because that zip file would be utterly massive um, our repository file is is very very big um, and so one big file would be massive and the other hard part for us is that it would um, we, we update it fairly frequently as new products and new things kind of come out so um, I think for for the customers and for our, for us it's just easier to have that that single listing um, and if we can we try to hopefully make that as easy to go find the components that you're looking for within that repository um, and then there you, know, you can kind of download them from there so um, as a note all of our files are in a step file format um, which you can open up across all sorts of different, you know, CAD programs. Um, you an STL file is easier um, and more straightforward for three D printing, um, you know. But it's really hard to sort of edit them with sort of your traditional sort of SolidWorks, Inventor, um, those style CAD programs. So um, all of our stuff is in step files. Um, so that is um, how you can get those. Um, question: uh, Do you have an Onshape Parts Depot? Um, for use in Onshape, or do you have to download all of your files and build your own parts list? Um, so we don't have any sort of direct sort of connectivity or, or direct input um, to Onshape, but I do know Onshape can read a step file. Um, so I played with Onshape just a little bit. So to my knowledge, the workflow would be just to download the file and uh, import it or bring it into Onshape uh, so that you can use it that direction. Um, but we do not have any direct plug into Onshape. Unless somebody out there in the community has done that, and I know that's the community angle for Onshape is, is very, very strong. So unless somebody else has done that, there's nothing that I'm, I'm aware of. Um, question from Kevin, uh, your orbital gearboxes are awesome. Okay, not a question. Thank you, Kevin. Um, any plans for other gear ratios, i.e. a 13.7? Uh, at this point, we don't have any plans for, for additional ratios. Um, a 13.7 is a little bit of a, a, a curious sort of a number. It is kind of a nice, um, it's a notch below the uh, Never S20, um, but not as far. Oh, my battery's running low. Oh, goodness. Um, all right, well, we're gonna have to work on that. Um, a 13.7 or, or something sort of in that neighborhood would be sort of a good, nice um, sort of middle ground um, option. Um, at this point, we don't have any, uh, uh, any, any sort of plans for that, but 13. We do have, so we, A, we have our Never S Sport line, um, which these things are really some serious, um, those are some serious gearbox. These things are awesome, I love them. They are as like bulletproof as bulletproof gets. Um, and we have these in a really wide variety of, of ratios. So we do have a 16 to one um, option on the Never S Sport line. I just hope this is the right cable. Yes, all right, cool. Laptop is charging, I'm not gonna run out of battery. Um, so we do have a 16 to one on the Never S Sport line. Um, so you can uh, kind of rock and roll with that there. Um, and the Never S Sport line does go all the way to 256 to one, um, which is this uh, big gearbox here. Um, and that gearbox can handle all of a 256 to one ratio. It's awesome. One of the other um, things that you can do is you can go and you can grab, um, um, you could grab one of our Pico boxes um, if you're looking to sort of get a little bit more custom on the, the gear ratio. So the Pico boxes um, kind of, there's three main types um, and they sort of vary by the motor input. Um, so the, the Leo, Mio, and Geo, um, like these guys here, those are for our orbital 
uh, gearboxes. Um, so like the Never S20 or the Never S 3.7. Um, and within these, they have the, the various gears here so that they can go um, with about a 30% overdrive, a one-to-one -one, or a 30% reduction. Um, and so you can kind of customize your, your ratio there um, a little bit on that front. The Uno, the Solo, Uno, and Duo uh, allow you to use uh, a Never S Classic gearhead. And then we also have the Turbo and the Twin Turbo, which um, are a motor only. So they go directly in from the motor. They don't have a gear reduction on the motor uh, itself. It's just the, the gearing inside of the Pico Box. So the Pico Box family really allows you to, you know, really kind of fine tune some of your components. Um, and also sort of relocate the, the output shaft so that you can get that onto proper bearings um, so those things spin really nice. One other thing that I want to kind of point out, I'll go grab our, we have a Pico Box, uh, uh, our Pico Box servo, which is this guy here, super servo and twin servo. Uh, these uh, still they use all the same design architecture as uh, the rest of the Pico Box line. Um, but you can get some really beefy, um, you know, support onto a shaft for, for a servo. They do not come with the servo, um, you know, but uh, a lot of really strong support here and a really well supported output shaft. I mean, like everything on the Pico Box line, they're, they're really optimizable. They're, they're really rebuildable. So you could, you know, if you want the plates to flip around backwards the other way, you can do that. If you want the output shaft to slide through the other direction, you can do that. If you want to replace the output shaft with something like 18 inches long, you can do that. Um, so you can do a lot of really cool stuff here with uh, the Pico Box servo line. Um, that's something that I believe came out last year, um, and it's it's really really cool. Um, so that that was one of the products I was I was really really kind of excited about. Um, so that's the the various uh, Pico Box line, um, and so those are some of the and and we do try to carry a lot of the components and parts uh, separately and individually. So um, if you're looking for something, you know, you want you know a nice a uh, solo plate, you know, because it's a really awesome way to mount uh, a Neverest motor to uh, your robot. Uh, you can buy the plates individually. Um, or if somebody were to, you know, bend and fold up, you know, and just straight taco one of these, you know, plates or, or something, you know, you can get that replacement part um, just from there. Uh, so those are some of those uh, various items. Um, one of the things I want to sort of touch on is some of the payment options. Uh, that that Andymark carries, um, you know, a credit card order is going to be the fastest for both us and for you. It's the fastest way to get your parts, um, you know, through our, our warehouse and, and order fulfillment, get those uh, out the door and in the mail. Um, you know, we do do a lot with POs for schools, especially, um, you know, a lot of schools need to pay by PO. Um, and so we do a lot with those. Um, and our, our business office is very, very good at processing POs and getting those out the door very quickly. Um, but they do take a little bit more time than just a straight credit card order. Um, but for, for those teams that are looking to, um, that, that need to pay by PO um, and are looking to try to get their stuff still as, as quick as possible and not wait for all of the different back and forths that typically need to happen, one option that we do offer, um, and you can kind of see more about this uh, down on the bottom here, we have uh, our purchasing link, um, and we sort of talk about open POs. Um, and, an, and an open PO is something that um, the team or the school or somebody sends Andy Mark sort of now or sort of before all of the ordering is gonna begin. And you can, you know, you and the school or whoever, you know, can set a limit, you know, so for, a thousand dollars, you know, whatever your limit is, you know, so you write a PO for generic robot parts, value not to exceed a thousand dollars. And then that'll generate a PO number in the system. And then when you go to pay and, and go through all the, the checkout, you can, you know, say, click the option for pay by PO. It'll ask you to put in your PO number. So you put in, you know, your open PO number. Now we already have that on file. So we can secure those parts, get them you know, through the warehouse and get them out the door very, very quickly, and then go through and create the invoice and go through and build a school. And because we already have that, that authorization to sell those parts, we already have that on file, um, we can process those very, very quickly and get those out the door. Um, so that is a great way to sort of speed up the process if you still have to pay by PO. I know the team that I mentor, um, you know, we've got to run all our financials through, the, through our high school. Um, and so we've got to pay by PO and we take advantage of the open PO process um, 
you know, so that we can get our parts uh, nice and quickly. So, um, you know, that's a that's a, a big thing that unfortunately not as many people know about as as we you know would probably enjoy being able to take advantage of that. Um, so, whenever we can, we like to kind of you know talk about that you know to um, to you guys to the teams, um, and that's a, a really awesome way to kind of help things along. Um, so those are some of the um, kind of the, the key highlights. Um, I guess here with you know if you're a tax exempt organization um, and we have the the right paperwork on hand, you know we obviously will um, not collect tax on those orders. Um, as various uh, tax laws are changing with who pays sales tax and in which areas, you know we're trying to keep up with those things. Um, if you think stuff went um, funny or went screwy or or things were applied that shouldn't have been applied. Um, our, if you email our, our, um, sales team, you know, or, um, reach out with either, uh, you can see here, tax at andymark.com. Um, we can go through that. Otherwise, uh, customer service at andymark.com is a great way to, um, get in touch. And our customer service group is awesome. They will, um, you know, work with you to, to make sure that everything gets, everything is correct. Everything gets sorted out. Um, and, and, you know, everybody is nice and happy. Um, so we, we try hard to, to make sure that we're, we're good on all of those fronts. Um, so yeah, so those are a lot of our resources. Um, and then, um, you know, we, we've been doing a lot on, let me see, do I have tips and tricks? Um, how to get help. Ooh, that's a, a, a good one. Um, if you email support at andymark.com, it'll go to our uh, team of crack engineers um, and we can, you know, help get all sorts of different, you know, questions answered from, hey, you know, my, this, this file's not downloading correctly, you know, there might be an issue with it, to, hey, my motor, my gearbox are making funny noises. Um, you know, we tried, you know, as, as best we can to sort of help through some of those, those technical, you know, questions and, and provide a lot of, you know, tech support, you know, that way, um, all sorts of, you know, different options that way. And then um, if you go to the, the contact us here, then, you know, this um, either goes to our customer service group um, and they can help you out that way, or um, it'll go to our um, tech support group, um, our, our support uh, group so you can you can get in touch with us uh, a lot of different ways um, and we're always really excited to you know help out you know wherever we can um, so yeah all sorts of, of cool uh, fun stuff on that um, check us out on social media you know we've got a lot of stuff up on YouTube a lot of um, uh, assembly videos and how-to guides up on YouTube and then um, you know we do some stuff over uh, Facebook and Twitter um, to try to help get some uh, information out there. Uh, we do have a TikTok account um, that was started by one of our interns over the summer. Um, I don't know enough about the TikTok, um, but given that the interns went back to school, we may not be doing TikTok anymore. Um, but so feel free to let any of your students or, or any of your team members know that, that we have a TikTok account. Um, uh, question in from, from Danny, uh, other Danny, uh, please tell me Andy Baker dances on TikTok. Yes. Yes, he has. Um, he's not like full on, he's not setting the TikTok world on fire, um, with some of his dances. Um, but Andy Baker has been on some of the TikTok dances and it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, go, go ahead, check out our TikTok. It's awesome. Um, we don't do a whole bunch on Twitch. Um, but um, you know we we do have a Twitch channel, um, so they're they're seldom, rarely uh, there's stuff up on Twitch. Um, but you can kind of get in touch with us that way. Um, yeah, Rebecca put in the chat that I was also featured on the TikTok. Uh, I got to do a a sort of then and now kind of a thing, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, ooh, uh, Manny Lowe, great question. Uh, Manny said, "Where's my FLL table?" Um, we had a teaser up on our Facebook page uh, a week or so ago. Um, that uh, an FLL table is forthcoming um, and more information is going to drop on that here in the next uh, week or so. Um, I, it might actually be Monday, so, so stay tuned. 
um, for more information about Lego League tables. It's something that we've been working on for years and years and years. Um, and we are super, super pumped to be getting it out there into the world. We're, we're really, really excited. Um, we think uh, everybody's going to, um, you know, really kind of love the, the whole um, the, the table that we've got. Um, and it's, it's really cool. So, um, yeah, not a good idea to hold your breath for it. Um, so, yeah, so um, if, you know, if, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free. Um, we can kind of take the last 15 minutes or so for, for Q&A. Um, I have a question, Danny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If an organization submitted their W-9 for tax exempt last season, do they need to resubmit it for this season? I don't believe so. I believe, oops, that's not the right one. I think that's the Andy Mark W-9. Um, I don't know, totally. Um, actually, no, I think I do know. I think you're fine. I think if, if, if we have one on file, and none of the information has changed. Um, I think you're you're okay. Um, so I think you're yeah. I think because I I I'm pretty sure I've only submitted one once, and that would have been three years ago. Um, and I still don't get charged tax. So <laughs> I believe it's good. But if you have any questions, feel free to email, um, you know, customer service at andymark.com and they'll be able to help you out and get everything kind of taken care of for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any other questions? No, but as a PDP who um, was responsible for sourcing and building the fields prior to Andy Mark taking over, your point about mm -hmm. consistency of sizes and measurements and all that stuff was spot on. Um, once the field elements were made and produced by Andy Mark, they've been pretty close to being very consistent. I mean, there's a little leniencies here and there, but I do appreciate Andy Mark being the source of the field elements. Well, thank you. Um, we're, we're really excited. Um, you know, we, we still have, you know, machine tolerance. So a lot of our parts, you know, obviously nothing is, Perfect, but you know our our machines usually hold about plus minus five thousandths of an inch. Um, so we're you know that's, that's kind of where most everything sort of lives. Um, but we're we're you know we, we try to to really sort of help make sure those things are consistent. Um, but just kind of having a, a lot of stuff that's all coming off the same processes, um, so that that way the you know when when you guys are assembling stuff, it is sort of just added. It's assembly, not necessarily you know fabrication so trying to, to help make that so that and then it also helps when you know you go out to a tournament you know the field's going to be the same as when you practice on so um even like the surface that you drive on you know if in the old days if somebody sanded their uh plywood versus you know or, or somebody got nice like grade a plywood and somebody got you know grade triple z plywood um they're both plywood um, but they just thought they'll have a big uh, impact, a big difference on, on what's going on. So all of our stuff comes off similar materials. It all comes off similar processing. Um, and so, again, trying to help build that consistency and build that capability to, to have everything sort of match up. And the colors match, too. I know when we were responsible for building fields, we had to find Mickey Mouse red at Home Depot. There's not a Home Depot close to me. There's one about 45 minutes away. So it's great to have the colors consistent and all that stuff. And there's always going to be some uh, tolerances and stuff, but I appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm going to miss my trip to Annie Mark this year. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about having all of our warehousing and, and distribution sort of here uh, locally here in the States, um, you know, and, and being in the Midwest sort of specifically, is we're never really that far away from the vast majority of our um, customer base. So there's, there's a huge chunk of first teams that are within about an eight hour drive of Andy Mark. And then there is sort of a natural little void in the mountain time zone. Uh, and the teams out on the West coast are a little bit harder to get to, but 
Um, you know, we love seeing them, you know, whenever we get the chance. Um, and, and away we go. A uh, question came in from Manny. Uh, for teams that pre-ordered field elements, when are they shipping? Um, so all team pre-orders are going to start leaving Andy Mark the Monday after kickoff. And I believe that's September 14th. Um, but less about the date. It's the Monday after kickoff. Um, and so they, they, you know, they start going in the order that those uh, sales were received. Um, so all, uh, you know, everybody that, you know, ordered early is going to start getting their stuff um, and out the door we go. Um, uh, partners, uh, I believe those are going to start shipping out uh, next week. Um, so that that way partners have time to build and assemble uh, their components um, for if they're doing virtual kickoffs or live kickoffs or, or whatever that might look like. Um, partners start getting their stuff uh, a little bit earlier. Um, all the team stuff is going to go uh, that that first Monday. Um, and I guess one more one more note, um, and this is very COVID nineteen related. Um, we understand that all of the teams out there and all the partners and like everybody's got all their stuff up in the air. Like we understand stuff's super weird this year, and, and we totally understand that um, teams don't want to commit to stuff until they're like absolutely sure. And we absolutely understand that. So I want to sort of preface with that. The one the I ask from all the teams um, for just a little bit of of maybe patience. Um, all of the the ordering and all the stuff, um, all the field sales, you know, all of our historical data of when teams order fields in the past is sort of completely out the window this year. So we have a good idea of what we think we might need in order to make sure that we always have fields in stock for the year. Um, but in past years, you know, we, we were able to have enough forecasting or have enough information where we could always have fields in stock. Um, and so if something, you know, if you had a tournament and, you, you know, you needed a field at the end of this week and it's a Monday, you know, we can get that field in a box out the door and it's great. Um, this year, we predict things are going to be a lot more volatile. Um, and so we don't necessarily have the greatest understanding of when all of those sales and all of those orders are, are going to happen. Um, so we are still, we are doing our absolute best um, to try to make sure that we're keeping things in stock. Um, and and we, we are always able to um, fulfill every one of those orders, you know, as soon as they come in the door um, and, and things are, are weird and it's goofy and it's COVID. Um, so I, my only request is if there is a thing that you know that you're going to do, if you know you're going to host a tournament, you, it's absolutely, it's, it's set in stone. We know we're doing it. Um, if you can give us as much lead time as possible, um, that just gives us and everybody as much runway. So if there is some, if you put your order in on the same day that there's some big massive rush, um, you know, that just gives us as much, you know, runway to, to make sure that we can fulfill that order and get that stuff um, to you um, and not have to postpone or reschedule, you know, tournaments or, or something like that. So where in the past we were able to deal with things coming in last second on a moment's notice, you know, because we had inventory this year, we have no idea. Um, so if you can, you know, try, you know, keep us in mind. Um, if, but we also, we, we absolutely understand not wanting to commit to anything until you know it's going to happen or you know it's the right idea. So, um, you know, we are we have plenty of inventory in the warehouse right now. Um, so things look like you know we are going to be um, able to fulfill for a very long time. Um, you know, and we're we're happy to to try to work with anybody um, to make sure that we can get things you know as needed. Um, being a little bit of a smaller company, we can be really nimble um, and make sure that we can solve those problems uh, as they come up. Um, so yeah, if you've uh, got anything, um, feel free to reach out and let us know. Thank you, Danny. Any other final words of wisdom before we put you all into a breakout room? Um, final words of wisdom. I would say, um, hmm. To do, I keep it fun. Uh, the more fun we're having, the 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 easier it is for the kids to to sort of latch on and, and get excited about it. Um, and I know the 
the times that I remember most about being on a team are the times that, you know, we were having the most fun. And sometimes some of our more um, particular uh, mentors or teachers would say that we were goofing around. Um, but, but we were having fun and we were building bonds and, and we were learning a lot of stuff. So um, I try to remember uh, middle school, me playing Legos, uh, learning things and goofing around whenever uh, my kids are maybe doing the same sort of stuff. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Danny. And on behalf of Andy Mark, tell everybody hello, please. I will do that. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you guys for, for having us. This is awesome. We, I, I love Andy Mark loves, you know, anytime we can get out in front of, you know, the, the teams and, and get to interact with everybody. So um, thank you. Thank you, Becca. Thank you um, everybody for, for letting me take up a, an hour of your Saturday. Um, One last question just came through. Absolutely. Uh, for remote FTC fence, uh, we only need a half field or a full one. Um, there is official first documentation and I don't want to say too many of the wrong things. Um, Manny, if may I deflect to you? Sure. Uh, or I would say wait till September twelfth. Yeah. Um, well, I think it. I think it's been known in the uh, part one of the game manual um, about remote. I have to double check. But uh, so, uh, will we need a half field or the full one? The answer is yes. <laughs> You'll need a half field or the full one. <laughs> But uh, um, we will, yeah, you, you only need a half field. There, I said it. There, yeah, there, like, like Manny and Peg mentioned, the part, part one of the game manual is out for both traditional events and remote events. Um, so take a look at that. Um, there is some verbiage in there. Um, otherwise, um, you know, for, in terms of ordering, you know, feel free to wait till kickoff and get sort of the full breakdown and the full understanding. Um, and the, the time delay between ordering at or around kickoff is probably not going to be that significant between ordering now. Um, so for, and, and we, we know that lots of people have been waiting to kick off to see what's going on. Um, before they, you know, sort of make any of those purchases, full field, partial field, you know, whichever. So, um, you know, feel free to, to wait. And then um, on kickoff, all will be revealed. Sounds great. He says hopefully. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and the start. Game, oh, I will, I'll just let you everybody know the game is awesome this year. I agree. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.